Welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for March 4th, 2020 at 7.07 p.m. in room 124. Um, to remind everybody, this meeting is audio and video recorded per the open meeting laws of the state of Massachusetts. Tonight we have a public hearing for 15 Lincoln Street for a solar array at 7 o'clock and then at 7.30 we have 194 Main Street comprehensive permit which um, there will be a request for a continuance. So at this time I will turn it over to the folks who are going to be presenting 15 Lawrence Street. Want to read it and um, before you do that, actually, I always have to do this. Joe, would you mind yep. rereading it into the record? Yeah, notice is hereby given in accordance with Chapter 40A of the Massachusetts General Laws and any and all amendments thereto that a public hearing will be held by the Zoning Board of Appeals in Room 124 at the Norfolk Municipal Building on Wednesday. Should I say the original date? Yes. December 18th, uh, December 18th 2000, uh, 2019 for the following application. Next Grid Incorporated at 7 p.m. for a special permit pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A, Section 9 as amended in Sections M and F5 of the Norfolk Zoning Bylaws to allow a large-scale ground-mounted solar photovi um, photovoltaic system. Variance relief is sought from the dimensional requirements of D1E2, E1B, and M7A. The property is located at 15 Lincoln Road, Assessors Map 22, Block 76, Lot 19, in the B4 Zoning District. Welcome. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Daniel Serber. I'm the Director of Land Development for Next Grid uh, Incorporated. And I'm here with uh, Brian Egation of BSC Group. He's our civil engineer on the project. Um, we are proposing uh, roughly one megawatt solar facility on a 5.6 acre parcel in the B4 zone uh, off of Lincoln Road, right um, west of the Walpole border. Um, before I get into our project, I want to go through the subject piece of land itself. Um, for at least the last 30 years, this parcel has been used as a dump. Um, it's covered in automobile parts. Uh, there's gas and oil tanks, piles of batteries, um, buried vehicles, uh, and a giant pile of contaminated dirt. Um, currently, the property owner uh, owes $70,000 to the town in back taxes. Uh, he's filed um, uh, economic hardship both for the uh, brownfield with DEP and, and as well as his tax burden with the town. Um, we are proposing to clean this up uh, to DEP standards and to the standards of the town and the Conservation uh, Commission. Um, we have been working with an LSP uh, to, to do this work and today we finally received our bid on how much this is going to cost us and it is over $700,000. Uh, so this parcel, we believe, has no real use or value to anyone but us for this solar uh, facility. And, and currently, it's, it's at risk of leaching uh, chemicals and, and other uh, hazardous materials into the river, um, the Stop River. <coughs> um, so we're proposing to fully clean this project up and uh, install um, solar panels. So we can go to the next screen so you can see what we're proposing. Um, we're proposing fixed tilt solar facility. Um, so the no moving parts here, they're south facing, so no glare is headed towards any residential buildings. Um, this is a Eversource easement um, where there's high tension lines, so not the little ones that are on your street, but the big overhead lines. Um, and then there is a hill here, and there's four residential units and there's a fifth down here. So we have five residential abutters. I went to every single one of their homes. Um, I dropped off packets with plans and um, we had one neighbor talk to me for a little bit. She is in favor and another uh, had delivered a letter to the planning board and myself. Um, she is very happy with the project. She uh, just had a request about the fencing. Um, she just wanted to make sure uh, the six inch uh, wildlife gap wouldn't be big enough for her dog to get under and instead uh, we just offered to fix uh, their wood fence and the planning board has agreed to let us put that fence all the way to the ground on that one particular side um, per resident request. Um, everything we've heard has been positive. Um, so at this point we've received our uh, site, uh, site plan review uh, approval from the planning board. Um, Hopefully, we'll be finished with the Conservation Commission on Wednesday, on uh, Wednesday of next week. Um, and uh, I think we can we can open this up for for questions already. 
This is the old call and wait <coughs> auto junkyard. Yeah, yeah. That's I what I realize that now. Yeah. 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 Go ahead, John. Uh, my question is uh, the, these uh, butter, uh, butters that you mentioned here. Can you just kind of uh, point out approximately where their houses are relative to the property? So Not re re relative, you know, in the lots that we see outlined. Sure. Okay. Brian, do we have a? Is there a topo in the set? Uh, yes. Well. <coughs> so uh, I just want to let you guys know that so their access is here through Daisy Lane. Mm -hmm. Their houses are, are closer to the Daisy Lane property line than this. And they can see straight over the top of this because they're set up, I believe, 40, 40 feet above it. And they can't actually see the ground um, from their backyard. So they call this the lake. That's the, the name they use because um, they just um, say they imagine it's water. That's because they just see open space there. That's not going to change. Um, right now, they're more concerned that uh, their animals and their children are right next to hazardous chemicals, and they might not be able to stop them from hopping the fence and and getting in. So, um, the, so but the houses are uh, there's there's no outline. We don't have a. We can pull up the Google sheet so you guys yeah. uh, the Google Map if you want to see closer. But they're. Can you think how many how many feet are we talk about? Hundred plus? Yeah, they're more, all, the, more than a hundred feet. feet. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's yeah, they're all yeah. which is the minimum requirement okay. by our bylaw. Okay. Yeah, I think you actually identified on one of your drawings okay. that they're all hundred plus. Can I ask a question about when it comes to the cleanup, and who checks off the boxes? What's the over? What's the authority looking at the? This has been completed correctly and everything. So that's been that's the Department of Environmental Protection, the Mass DEP. Right. Um, so it's a brownfield. So they'll be doing the inspections. Right. Um, it's part of our approval with the planning board. Um, once the uh, full cleanup uh, plan is is 100% written out, we're going to go back and present that to them. Right. And upon cleanup, they've requested one of their people go out with uh, DEP and and uh, make sure it's up to snuff. Right. But. Um, but you're hiring a, a contractor. Yeah, we have a we have a an LSP right. uh, that's going to be doing all the work, right. um, and then it'll be approved by DEP before we start any construction of the solar. And so once they present the plan and they accomplish what DEP says they had to accomplish, then gets checked off everything. It'll be considered safe. That's correct. All right. And you're actually going to clean. Are you going to have it cleaned out? Take all the material out. You're not going to cap it, correct? Or are you go? How are you going? Uh, uh, Every, all, the, um, all the materials are going to be removed. There's a small area that has, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the chemical is called catamine. That's the only chemical that uh, on site that can't be disposed of in the state of Massachusetts. So that's all going to need to be trucked up to likely Maine, um, which is one of the bigger costs uh, that we're looking at for the cleanup. Um, but yeah, it'll all be removed. There, it'll, it's going to be cleaned, I believe, to residential standards. So definitely not a cap. Yeah. I didn't see. I Sorry, go ahead. No, you don't have to go on. No, go ahead. I, you said I'm, I'm trying to equate um, like power plants, and you said one megawatt? It'll be one megawatt AC. Yeah, and, and help me out. What's a, like, what's a power plant? Uh, I don't know. You know What's a generating capacity of a regular power plant? Oh, one, one megawatt AC. This will this will also have some battery storage capability, which will go on the DC side. But as far as AC, um, two uh, megawatt is two to four hundred houses, depending on local using uh, uh, usage. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. What's the the trucking of material out? Do you know what, how many trucks there are going to be? What's going to be the access of removing this material? Do you know what that is yet? I don't know if the I know the planning board gave has restrictions as to the hours and days, but did, did they talk about truckloads with you at all? And uh, no, they didn't. We didn't really have that uh, information about what the cleanup would entail. I, I got the report today yeah. um, from our LSP. It's not a plan. It's just kind of the report of their mm -hmm. estimate of <coughs> the cost estimate for <coughs> removal. Sure. Um, we have strict time uh, limits on this for what we can do. Obviously, this is going to be really expensive, so our main concern right now is to get this into the SMART program. Uh, the Massachusetts SMART program is the mechanism um, in which we get paid um, from the from the state and from uh, Eversource to sell them power, and it's a declining block. Um, so right now we're in block three, and based on the estimate we got today and how much we're spending for this drainage plan, um, slipping to block four could eliminate the project. Uh, planning board understood that, so they were uh, able to grant us uh, our our 
permissions um, before that plan was 100% taken care of. Um, but the, the fact remains, it'll be cleaned up to DEP standards no matter what. And you'll be going out that access driveway. This is, the, this, is Road. The, this is the only access, yeah. Yeah, and going out Lincoln Road towards Walpole, is that the plan? Towards or? Walpole, that's the closest way to the freeway. Okay. Uh, obviously, we're going to have SWIP plans. There's going to be full track outs, um, you know. You from California? That's where they have freeways. Huh. <laughs> I am actually from California, <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the turnpike, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything about uh, anything, any of Butters in terms of Walpole that had to approve anything you're doing? Um, no. Well, so I you didn't have to present anything to the town of Walpole? No, we uh, presented to all the uh, Butters. There's no Butters in Walpole that are okay. more than 300 feet away. Okay. Um, what no. about, where is this in relation to the gaming club for Walpole, the hunting? I'm unfamiliar, That's unfortunately. Further down? It would be further down, I believe. On the other side of Daisy Lane. Okay. So you have, in other words, if you were to continue going on your map, right. Okay. Right. Uh, Most questions. More, more inside. Well, actually, no. It'd be more inside Walpole then at that point. Yes. Yes. Correct. Yes. Right. Yeah. Beyond Daisy Lane. Yeah. Beyond, beyond Daisy right, Lane. Right. right. So yeah. it's, it's keep going. And yeah, it's continue. Half a mile or so. Clean up to installation. How long are you planning the project will uh, take to get it up and running? So we're hoping we can get the site cleaned up in a month um, is what we're hoping for. Uh, that could obviously take longer. Um, and then there's going to be inspections after the cleanup. So uh, a month of labor, DEP inspections, and then we start our construction, the construction timeline um, for a project this size. The actual putting in the, the racking and installing the panels uh, this size, it's only maybe 40 days. Um, so it's a really quick process. Then there'll be another couple months of testing, uh, quality control. So we won't actually flip the switch um, for at least three months after we start moving dirt. And lighting, you, I know you said in your, in your application that there won't be any lighting requirements, but I imagine there must be some emergency lighting or anything on this project, or no, don't they? So um, generally, no. So sometimes a town will require us to we have an emergency lockbox for the fire department. Sometimes a town will want a little blue or red or, or white light above that. Um, th this town hasn't asked for that, right? Correct. And no one's asked for any, any lighting. Um, the, the only place where there's an arc, uh, any kind of electricity <coughs> that's actually creating an arc is right here on a concrete pad um, right near the entrance. Um, we, we don't usually have any, any lighting unless they, we do decide to put in a motion detector, um, but we haven't proposed that on this project. And the fence around it is how high? Seven. Seven feet. So completely secured. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the planning did a pretty good job. I don't know if you read there. Yeah, so it's not yeah, it's pretty, yeah. pretty in depth. I'm surprised they didn't ask about truckloads, but they probably didn't know it until you got your approval today and your, and your cost analysis. That there was going to be dirt. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so one month time frame isn't that bad. No. No. So uh, we are asking for some uh, relief from some of the items in the bylaw, and I, if, oh, yeah. you, if you guys are done with the questions, I want to kind of go through what we're going to be asking sure. for. Um, so in the zoning bylaw D one E two, that requires fifty foot residential setback. Um, and that's to the south. So there's there's two sides where there's no abutters, but these are but they're still residentially zoned. Um, so we don't think we should have to abide by the residential setbacks, considering there's no residential use uh, possible here at the transmission easement um, at the river. And then we're also asking for some relief on this side as well, on all all three sides, on the western side. Um, you know, the, the main reason for that for our, from our perspective is we need every panel that we have designed to make this thing pencil, and especially now that we have the cost, it was definitely on the high side of what, what the estimate was. Um, and, and so that's what we're asking for. So uh, the use of the abutting property, the south, is overhead transmission lines. The site has been listed as a 21E property due to soil contamination. 
Um, and the, sh the shape of the property is that the rows of solar panels must be oriented on a east-west axis. Therefore, compliance with the provision of the bylaw would result in substantial loss of solar panels, uh, rendering the project not feasible from an economic standpoint. Um, oh, zoning bylaw E1B, minimum frontage required is 150 feet. Um, we don't have. You want that back? There you go. Yeah. So this is a current non-conforming parcel. Um, it doesn't actually have uh, frontage. Okay. Um, the frontage area is a transmission easement. Um, so, you know, we'd like relief in the form of a variance uh, to relieve us of the, the frontage requirement. Um, and so, and then there's a 100 foot setback from residential properties that we're looking for relief from. It's pretty much the same as what I went over in uh, D1, E2, but it's M7A. Um, Yeah, Brian can further explain. He's sure. Is the Does he have that? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm just one looking for, and then I don't see that we have to do the variance yeah. uh, discussion. So, so hi, good evening. For the record, uh, my name is Brian Yergation. I'm a professional engineer from BSC Group. Um, so the three forms of relief, one of them is on Section M, which is your solar energy uh, section of the bylaw, which requires a 100-foot setback to a residential property. And your zoning bylaw, as you know, this uh, under Section D requires the 50-foot setback to residential properties. So that's why seemingly the same form of relief with different numbers, but th that's what explains that. And the other one is for the frontage. Uh, it's a pre-existing non-conforming lot. Uh, and we do have an easement here, but it's only about 70 feet. Uh, we're providing a we're providing a 50-foot setback to this property line here and 25 foot setback to this property here uh, again this is this is a 300 foot wide uh, electrical transmission easement this side over here there is actually a small undevelopable parcel of land which is owned by the same owner um, who owns the locust property and it's completely landlocked and it's it's completely it's not <coughs> developable because it's entirely within a jurisdictional you know wetland resource area so Again, those are some of the reasons why we felt that, um, you know, it wasn't really particular to, to this zone, why, why we felt that, um, you know, the 100 foot wasn't, didn't really, shouldn't apply in this case. Okay. Are, are all these different requirements that you're, you're asking for, are they on this table that's on this? I'm trying to find a good summary of where that's in your plans. Um, for example, I'm looking at minimum lot size being the 30,000 required. The best you, you have plenty of lot size. Right. Right. Okay. Correct. The best place to, um, I guess, if you look on sheet three, which is our layout and materials plan. Is this it? Can't really. Read one. That. Um, one more. Can you show that? Yep. Nope. Back one. Back. There we go. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Back again. And back one more. Okay. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Um, so yeah, it's dimensioned here. The okay. It's dimensioned there is 25.5 feet. There's a dimension here of 54 feet. Uh, these are these are the closest points of encroachment on the westerly border and the southerly border. Right. And do you show? And then we have a zoning table on this sheet as well. Right. I'm just trying to have a, a clear indication of what it is in terms of your proposal versus what the requirement was. Right. Is, yeah. is it all there? So that's so it. 54 yeah. feet. Yeah. Yeah. So 25.5, and where was the other one that's on the left? It's 38 feet. I'm trying to find 24. Where's the 38 foot one? 38 is on the on the uh, westerly side, isn't it? Is that your westerly side? Oh, the, the uh, rear, the 38.2? Yeah, where, where is that one on there? The word rear is considered the triangle. Right, right. Yeah. The, See, I'm looking at these so you know what? I'm sorry. That's an old. That's an, that must be an old. This is the closest point here. That? It's 54. See, um, so we oh, had a so we so had a previous a deficit. I'm looking for the deficit. Yeah. Well, here's his proposed. Right. The, the closest 25, is 54, and that abuts the stop river. He's on the side. Correct. He's on a little lamp lock piece between the stop river and that in that line. There is, and it's it's owned by the same owner as the parcel, which 
which next grid is developing. This project, you just have to um, he didn't offer to sell it to us, and by the time we found out this was happening, he just, he's not very responsive, so I, I can leave it at that, but it just didn't seem like he was particularly <laughs> interested on, on changing the deal that we had already, so. He may not have been aware of it, you think? It, it doesn't sound like it, but he's, he's in poor health at the moment, so it's. What, Sir, to answer, to answer your question about the 38 feet oh, okay. that, was, that was listed in the table, I, I apologize. That that was for an older <coughs> version. Uh, we had we'd gone through a couple different iterations. We had one. Um, the prior version of this actually encroached further, um, well, about 16 feet closer to the rear property line, and um, throughout the peer review process with the planning board. We ended up changing our drainage design from a surface uh, infiltration basin to a subsurface, uh, and when we did that, we were able to pull everything further away from the from the resource area. Okay. All right. So we're going to make you go through the variances a little bit more, just because they're not really well defined in your application. So just so, and it helps us with the finding of facts. So sure. I'll let you. So let's go. We'll start with the south side again, just so you can make sure that. Joe, can, we can get it into our record. Okay, absolutely. Um, so we'll just take them one at a time. Yeah, Start so with yeah. D1E2, yep. requires 50 foot setback from a residential property. Um, so that is along this property line here where we have the 25 foot um, plus or minus. That's the closest structure, closest um, solar array or solar panel to the property line. And you know, as we said, one of the reasons is because of the orientation of the property and the solar panels only work when you orient them along an east-west axis. And in this particular case, if we had to maintain a 50-foot setback here, because of the, the panels are s almost parallel to this line, it would result in losing a significant portion of that array, mm -hmm. um, which would really make the project economically not not possible and the abutter to that side there is the electric <coughs> company the electric company correct okay and have they they obviously it's a residential district and they have a easement on or they own it they that's owned by the by the company so now if they say they decide to remove their electrical power lines and develop there have you got any approval from them with regard to this with regard to the, you, you obviously, because we're going to give you the variance, but do they know you're looking for this variance? Well, they are very aware of the project. They've already given us our, our interconnection service agreement. Um, okay. So do they know that we're specifically seeking an easement? I mean, they were sent the notice as the abutter. They know that we um, are accessing under through their easement um, to the property. Um, I'm not sure if they know that we're seeking a specific variance, but not imagine a scenario where they are getting rid of their transmission lines in the I don't know <laughs> Amy they were on the abutter list though um, I'd have to double check it but I would imagine they were on their and we, we do have their their approval for, for yeah. this project okay just want to make sure you know obviously you know we don't want to think they, them to think that we have pulled a fast one on them no they they signed off on this long before you guys did okay so. and that, that's who's that national group Eversource Eversource okay okay all right now you can go to the westerly side. Okay. Um, so on the westerly side, we're actually complying with D1E2 because we're providing a 54-foot setback there. Um, the next variance was from section E1B. Or did I sufficiently address the first one? The, the south side you're referring yes. to? Yes. Okay. And that, is that a variance? Yes. Okay, because we have to make sure they meet yep. the credentials of the variance, as yep. Mike so diligently makes our applicants go through. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So we have shape. The other, the other factor would be the soil conditions. Um, and because of the soil conditions of the contamination, um, in order to maximize, you know, the solar array, because of those conditions, it's necessary to encroach further, I guess, would be another justification. 
soil conditions, shape, or topography? Well, with, well when you say soil conditions, <laughs> you're sitting on top of the soil. So I don't know. So I think it's your no. But in order to in order to get this permitted, we have to clean up the site. Right. So that's, okay. bec and that's because of the soil conditions that exist. We're looking more at shape topography, I think. I think, yeah, well, the shape, I think, because you need to go east to west to make this work. Correct, yes. So the shape of your lot may be more your your reason, not your yep. top, not your, your topography certainly is, and, and, but it looks like your shape has to be because you need to have your array sitting in that right. direction. Yep. I think you can make an argument for our soil conditions. You do? I, yeah. I, I threw do. it out as a secondary one. I, yeah. you know. No, I think I'd make an argument. Okay. You would? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll let you write that one. All right. I'm glad to. <laughs> Go yeah, ahead. I mean, All right. We're max we're, we are maximizing the lot with the solar panels, right? Right. Yeah. Correct. So yeah. It's not like you're. It's not like you're being restricted to a certain portion of the property because of soil. So. Um, well, it. it if we had to adhere to the 50-foot setback, we would we would lose a significant amount of solar panels. Yeah. Right, but again, the soil alone doesn't, I think, justify the variance. I think the, sure. shape, the shape more likely. Right. Right. I, I, I think what we're trying to say is because of the soil conditions, any uh, adherence to that uh, bylaw would make the project financially not feasible, um, but not physically unfeasible. Of those three criteria, they, ha they, they have to be unique. and. My argument would be that these soil conditions are unique. Where else in Norfolk do we have this type of contamination? My argument would be, I don't think too many places are like this. I think it's very unique. Yes, but he's not. But what they're not doing anything with the soil. They're getting rid of it. Yes, but there's still going to be soil there when they're done. Right, but yeah, that's I think shape is a better shape is the way to go. A but it's argument you know, because it's you do need east to west. <coughs> you need to maximize the. Well, I mean, yeah. Without talking about financial, you know, yeah. constraints, you obviously need to. There might to be other lots in town shaped like this. Yeah, that's right. So I think we. Well, shape of their solar array to make it. Oh, work. I see. Okay. Make it work. Okay. I don't know about their soils going to make it work, Mike. <laughs> but <laughs> all right. All right. Um, the second item that which from which we need relief is uh, section E one B. And that's because the minimum frontage requirement in the B4 zoning district is 150 feet. Right. It's a pre existing non conforming condition. Um, so that, that's the reason for that. Uh, I guess that would be a lot shape. The third form of relief um, which we are seeking is from section M.7.A, which uh, requires a 100 foot setback from a structural to a residential property. That would occur on the along the southerly line, as we previously discussed, and also along the northern and western boundary here, where we're currently providing a 54-foot setback. And um, again, I, I would argue th for the same exact reasons that we were seeking the relief um, from D1 E2, um, and. You know that's that's the reason here. The soil conditions. I, I would still put forth that one. Um, I would too. This is what mm -hmm. <laughs> you would too. Listen to you. Yeah, that's true. Not one hundred percent, but I'll, I'll definitely right try to absorb this. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Could you explain this? Uh, that um, I don't know. Is that Paved roadway. What that darker area is? No, no. From on the right hand side, right hand side. Keep going. Drive, Showing that this one or that, that thing piece. right there. What is that? That's the driveway. Yeah. Oh, it is a driveway. That's is that a paved, or is it just that will be paved? Oh, yes. And that's really for once a month. There'll be one person who will come and um, and do whatever they would, whatever they do. And the grass we mowed about twice a season. Um, so. That's just for access to the site. It will be gated. Um, Tell me about Abby, though. <laughs> I'm just curious more than anything, do you generally look for brownfield sites to clean up? Is that typical of your operation? Uh, we, we do definitely seek them out. Um, this property in particular found us and not vice versa. Um, but yeah, we seek out 
brownfields, uh, landfills. Uh, we're working with quite a few former sand pits right now, um, south of here and on the Cape. Um, and we do have a substantial commercial roof lease business. So we don't provide power to the business below, but we, we lease a lot of roofs. So we do very little uh, greenfield development. Mm -hmm. So in total, are you looking for three variances? Yes, sir. Looks okay. like three variants, right? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> two so along the southern, one two along the southern side, and basically two along the western well, side, or, or one along the western side. I guess we'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Special permit. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 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 a special and a special permit in order yeah. to do the solar. So, array. which paragraph do we refer to the special permit then? The, the special permit um, is, is M. No, I'm looking at M now. It says this is M is for a solar array. Right. But M is setbacks, so right? I think no, it's M. The, okay. use, the use requires the special permit. Yeah, M1. Okay. So, the solar array. So, we okay. have to approve for a special permit for a okay. solar array. On section M. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank okay. You. Are getting the energy back on the grid here? Or? Say again? Does that have to be separate? Have to be well, probably, yeah, we'll yeah, probably do them separate. Special permit. We can permit. do all three variances separate? We can do all three variances together and we'll do the special permit. Back tax on this. Interestingly enough, uh, and I had this discussion with, uh, with Richard, uh, the planner, but the property isn't even in the, the solar uh, overlay district. Which is interesting. So the the question we we were debating um, a few months ago was, do we even need the relief um, from the items under Section M? Which in this case is the there's one um, M7A. Yeah. Um, so we applied for that out of you know an abundance of caution, really. Um, it was just it was kind of interesting. Everyone was a little surprised when we discovered that the property wasn't actually in the zone. It doesn't it doesn't need to be. And uh, what Beta actually said was that the Section M. It was his position that uh, Section M of your bylaw applies wherever this you're proposing solar a solar. So it's almost like a floating district, if you will. Yeah. But yet there are a few uh, areas in town which are on that what are mapped in that solar overlay district. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Just a question. Mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah. th that yeah. strip between the Stark River and the parcel that you folks are going to acquire, do you know, is that contaminated? Um, our L LSP took a look at it. If you, can you go back to the existing conditions? Uh, n no. The very yeah. first one that we were on. Uh, there, there. Um, so. There was nothing, we, we didn't find any evidence that any parts were thrown into, into the, the trees here. So everything seemed to be very contained uh, on this side of the tree line. Um, the, I think, is this where the big, uh, there's a big pile of dirt here, which is where uh, we found some of the catamine. And then he, uh, way back here is where a lot of the batteries he had dumped. And those are the places that actually had chemicals, our LSP said. Um, nothing was was in this this parcel, and nothing was drifting towards the river. So the cleaning we need to do on this part of the property is is minimal anyway. I just I didn't look at what's the elevation change from his property down towards the stop stop river. Does it change dramatically, or uh, if you go down there, you look you're looking down pretty steeply the into the river. Yeah. 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 If you're looking at a mark here of 183, 185, 186, and you come all the way down to 123. So there's a drop. Yep. That's what it feet there. Mm. Okay. Right. Any other questions? We said that the two of the variances applied to the front, right? The, the southern. Southern side. I guess we're calling it the southern. All, all, th all three, all three uh, so are, are to the to the south, and then one of them also applies. So nothing to applies the to the other. To no, the we kept we kept all, all our residential setbacks. Right. Maintain the hundred foot setback on the red on the side where the residences actually are. Okay. So the they're all they're all residential zone, but this is the only one that's operating and used as a residential district. So we didn't seek relief on that. Okay. I understand that. Okay. Anything else? 
Well, I guess in terms of the the variance itself, the criteria. The criteria. Yeah. Do you have the Do you have a criteria sheet, Amy, for variances? Um, I'm not sure. You have the file. You don't have it in here. It's not in the file. You have one. Of course I do. Look at you. Variance. There we go. There we go. There you go. You got one here. Okay. I was carried on me. Very good. I've had this for 15 years. Well, this will be for our deliberation, but just so we can look at it for what we have in the open hearing. The variance must be with respect to particular land or structure, which it is. There must be circumstances related to soil condition, shape, or topography of such land or structures, and especially affecting such land or structures, but not affecting generally the zoning district which is located. I think we're, we're relying more on shape than we are on anything I else. I think so, yeah. I just don't know how you put soil relating to soil condition. It's just it's just because you're not building yeah. something. That's why it's, you're on. These are going to be sitting on, what do they sit on? Pil uh, concrete or on ballast systems or ballast trays or what? Um, so after the site's cleaned up, we'll be conducting the geotech surveys, and it could be pile driven. Uh, screw driven piles or it'll be on a, a ballast of uh, precast concrete what mr. chairman uh, uh, number two uh, those three uh, are what's unique about them that's the way I've always interpreted it this criteria is the most important one so uh, is the shape of the lot unique is the topography unique or the soil conditions unique that's what we're trying to determine so that's why I'm making the argument that the soil conditions are unique to the rest of the zoning district. Is any, is there, are the soil conditions the same in any other part of the zoning district? And my answer is no. I mean, uh, also, uh, if I can point to some unique characters of the property, it's also a B4 surrounded by residential, which is quite unique. It's bordering a river and a transmission easement, which is quite unique. Uh, it's residential abutters are set up to where there's no visual uh, line of sight to the project, which which is also unique, um, and the soil conditions do render this having no other viable use uh, because of the contamination I inherent in the soil. Um, I find that pretty unique as well. That's 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 the way the, the way I look at it, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. The sh honestly, the shape <coughs> isn't that unique. I bet we could find another lot yep. that shape yep. in Norfolk. Well, I guess the well, question is that our decision doesn't open the door to being able to maximize any piece of property for panels from edge to edge is, I guess, one of the concerns, right? Right. right. Well, that would be the concern. Right. Because then someone else might have another piece of property where they're trying to maximize panels to the edge. <laughs> that's not our jurisdiction anyways. That's the planning board. Plenty has to come to us. Um, little enforcement of the provisions of the bylaws would involve substantial hardship, financial otherwise, to the petitioner or the applicant. Obviously, mm -hmm. it would be in this case. It would be a hardship if they could not have those variances. The project would be deemed yeah. uneconomic. Right. right. Mm -hmm. it, are you, is the back taxes, how are they being handled? Are you folks taking care of those? or? Um, so when we close on the land, um, they'll be paid out of the sale price immediately. Okay. Correct. And we get our tax money, which is good. Bizarre will be maybe granted without substantial detriment to the public good. Well, certainly. Well, actually, this is an improvement to the public good. Right. It is not substantial detriment. This is right. this is a positive to the public. Oh, correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. We're just going through them while we have the open here with you, just because normally you would present, you would be giving us some of this information ahead of time. We didn't receive it, so that's why we're. So I don't think we have that unless you did this somewhere yeah, else. I didn't or see this spoken to in the package. Yeah. 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 No, it's not. yeah. That's why. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess, yeah, I think it's a combination of shape and soil, because you're right. Yeah. There is no soils here that are anywhere in town that would have this, that prevent being built on because of this situation. Exactly. Without having to grant these variances. But you could you could actually clean it up and still maintain your buffer, your, uh, your uh, setbacks if you wanted to. So the shape, because remember, it drops 50 feet down on one end. And it is a 40 feet up on the other end, which mm -hmm. does make the shape of it a little unique in far as elevations, yeah. if you want. So yeah, maybe we I can, think you can. Uh, maybe we can rely on both. Rely groups. both. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So that's. Does that make some sense? Yeah, I think that's key. As we, as we stretch it, stretch, 
Stretch Kaliza. code. Is this stretch the, Kaliza. Is this the stretch code? <laughs> stretch Kaliza. <laughs> I've, always, I've always looked to Mike for the uh, clearance on that. <laughs> <laughs> Anything I'll help else? You write this up, Don, Joe. I could use a little help, but I think that we have a lot of information, which is good. Yeah. I think we have the information we need. Yeah. Anything else, Joe? No, I have to my song. Anything else, uh, well, I guess it just anything, no, would there be any special conditions <coughs> we would impose on this property? The, the, the problem is there's going to be no lighting. Right, and that's, that's right. So that would be okay There's going to be, the planning board obviously does not require any lighting. Right. There's going to be no dumpsters or anything on site or anything over any period of time. Right. Um, I think the trucking is going to be, uh, it could be excessive for a month, but it seems like it's going out of Walpole and the planning board didn't um, question you on how many trucks per day, trip truck trips. Um, and I don't think that would be yeah. a condition we would right. impose. So other than making sure the property is secure, that would be and under the planning board's and authority? And they did, and they actually got a fence, and they're doing right. a wood fence on the one side. Right. Yeah, they're actually the rebuilding it, I guess, or replacing we're it. We're rebuilding the current fence, and then it's repetitive, but we also are going to have chain link on that side. So it'll be a double double fenced on the residential side. Right. And the rest of it actually is all fenced in as well. Right. right. And the, this has been looked at substantially by the fire department. The police department signed off, so yeah. we're, we're confident. Right, so we have no reason to condition any of those items. No. Okay, very good. Thank Just you. want to make sure. Okay. Do you have anything else? That's a nice project. Yeah, yeah, it is. It'll be good to see it cleaned up finally after what thirty years. Mm -hmm. Those of us who've been here that long, right? Yeah. Anything else, Stretch? That's it for now. I'm sure I'll think of something else. <laughs> <laughs> which, which one is the South River flow from this project? Does it flow south? Uh, if from the southwest to the northeast. State should help pay for this. This is a major waterway. They should come in and, and say, "Look, you don't want these lead batteries contaminating the South, South River." The state doesn't have this. They should help pay for it. This smart program does allow a provision, to, so we get a, a slight bump in in what the utility pays based on us developing on brownfields. So the state actually gives you a discount. Uh, they they pay you less if you're cutting down trees. It's called a subtractor, and then we get an adder for doing work like this. So it's partially helped paid for by the state. Is there any trees on the west side that are going to be cut down? Yes. Right? On the w oh, on the west side? Yeah. So uh, here's the, the, it shows the tree line on the plan if you mm -hmm. go to uh, the solar plan. Yes. One more slide. So the existing tree line, which is, which is back here, this is the extent of the limit of work, and it does not require any tree clearing here. The tree clearing that's required is going to be on site. Yeah. Okay. All right. If we have no other questions, Drew and I entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Very good. We will... Um, Hopefully, deliberate on this this evening. We've got to get our facts together, but um, we'll see Amy, we'll talk to her tomorrow maybe, and she let you know where we are. Okay. Thank that, you. That Thank was you a guys. unanimous vote? Yes. Okay. You didn't hear us? No, I only heard my solar power. Yes. See, I'm paying attention. Who's on Mark going to be? All right. Okay. Before we get into that, we have. Uh, we had at 7.30 a continuation of 194 Main Street. We received a letter in our packages from the applicant's attorney asked to continue you until okay. April. Good night. Okay. Is it Amy, is it April 12th? April, April 1st. Hmm? April, April 1st? 1st? April 1st. How yeah. appropriate. You're the only one who has a copy of that okay. letter. April 1st. Not in your packets. And um, do we have a time yet for 77 Boardman or 19 Shire? I gave you, um, you gave me a some suggestions yep. that you can look at. Okay. So, yes, could we, the applicant has asked to continue April 1st, so could I have a motion to continue 194 Main Street, comprehensive permit, until 7.20 p.m. on April 1st? So, so moved. moved. Second. So we have a motion, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good. We have no minutes to approve. Um, we have no, the only new business we have is, we have another situation <coughs> where um, I think everybody remembers Lorraine Sweeney appealed the modification to Bob Bullock's decision to require a stop work at 144 Seekonk Street a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, Lorraine Sweeney appealed that modification. Um, her and the applicant for the comprehensive permit for 144 Seacon Street have come to an agreement, um, a legal agreement, so th that the selectman will be signing off on that um, hopefully tomorrow night and probably to avoid having all the ZBA members, a call a special meeting for the ZBA members, they ask, could I again uh, get a vote of confidence from this board to sign on behalf of the zoning board to sign that agreement. Is that in lieu of what we originally were going to have an executive session on? Uh, correct. Okay. okay. So if I could have a motion to grant me approval to sign on behalf of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the um, Lorraine Sweeney appeal agreement with uh, the applicant at 144 Seekonk Street. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay, good. All right. Do you want to deliberate this tonight so we can get this done? This yeah, uh, let's get it out of the way. So yeah, fresh so. our mind. Right, yeah. yeah. Shouldn't okay. take too long. Just because it's. I want to get that link. Normally, they do give us a, a, a very. Oh, they do. Yeah. I'm surprised that they yeah. didn't yeah. I'm surprised they didn't yeah. do that. I mean, yeah. these guys, BDS, who is it? BGS. BGS. Yeah. BC staple them in there. BSC yeah. group. Mm -hmm. The variants. Those I know. Consecutive pages. Rich. No, I see. I talked to Rich. Rich. Yeah. yeah. What was the thing that you showed me before the graph that showed the, 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 the use box. table? Yeah, the use table. Where is yeah. that? Oh, I'm glad um, they're going to clean this up. E1B, oh, right. I think. My kids go fishing on the stuff river. They won't have to catch the fish no, that no, are lit D2. up there. No, yours are, yours are actually B. upstream. It's the ones that, have you ever been over here? Yeah. To Colin Wade? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a disaster. Yeah, I know it is. It's nasty. Oh, this is upstream. Yeah, yours is. The, this is the, the wall pole. So this is. Oh, this is the wall pole. But I mean, the Stop River goes right down near my street. Yeah, but doesn't it? Uh, from his, you made. I don't know if you know. From Stop, from yours, it would go. It would actually go northerly. So this is I downstream. Uh, no, this, this is, is upstream of you. This is upstream. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean. Yeah. And the Stop River goes. No, no, no. Uh, well, I think it goes. I assume it goes to the south, so maybe yeah, you are getting the yes. glowing fish. Yeah, we are getting the glowing fish because it goes yeah. south yeah. through Medfield. Right, then it goes through Medfield after it leaves your yeah. parcel. Yeah. So yeah. Right. So you might be getting glowing. Are you eating them? No, only for hors d'oeuvres. So the first thing he is. He really gets it to his guests. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when Don comes over, that's when we serve him. So, so <laughs> well, I notice when I see him go out to his car, Don, I always could see him, right? There's like a little glimmer. So the first thing is we're going to be granting them a special permit to allow for this correct. type of application right. in the B4 zoning district, right? Yes, correct. Okay. There's nothing other than saying yes or no to that. Is that correct? It's, it's just it's a it's a it's a solar array, a, a, a large scale solar array. Yeah, and that's really what it is. That's what the special permit is being granted for. Right. So there's not. Do we have to have specific findings of facts about this for the special permit, or because uh, you, you yeah, want to write this up? Are we, we writing this up separately? We'll, we'll do them as two two different things. One will be a special permit, one will be a variance. So that's so that two separate. About, right. Okay. Two so, separate. So let's talk about the special permit first, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Right. You want to do findings of fact, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yeah, for, spe for the special permit. For right the special up, right? permit. Right. All right. So, number one, it's in the B4 zoning district. Yep. Right. 25.6 acre parcel of land. Uh, number three, the property has been used as a dump for the past 30, 30 years. Auto dump. <laughs> yep. Auto dump. Um, the current owner owes the town $70,000 in back taxes, which will be um, paid to the town upon the uh, closing on the property. Um, the applicant proposes to clean the property to the tune of $700,000. Um, the land has been leaching materials into the Stop River. Uh, it is a brown field site. Should we? I don't should, know. I, I think we shouldn't be saying that. I think we should say it's a brownfield site, right? right. I don't know if we should. To I be specific about what's leaching, I don't think that's no. all. We don't no, need I to. Don't, no, scratch that. I'm, I'm just giving it's you just what his Mike's, testimony Mike's was. Mike's done his work. Look right. at him. He's just yeah. shooting them off. This is the testimony that we were giving. I'm right. not making this up, so I'd leave it in there. I mean, this is what he told <laughs> okay. us. I, I don't think he said leaching, though. I said though. the potential. He, I believe I heard he said the potential. Potential yeah, for leaching. Yeah, right. Put the word potential in. It isn't leaching. But this is the development of a brownfield site. Yes. Yeah, they have uh, the plan, by planning board speed. approval. Okay. Yep. Planning board uh, site plan approval. DEP will be overseeing the cleanup mm -hmm. of the site, and for what it's worth, it will produce one megawatt of electricity. Yep. 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 
We have five residential abutters. You can find four. Five, he said. Done, I'll check. Check your acreage. I think you said 25 acres. 25.6. Yeah, I up with 6.4 acres. I Butter is technically it. Uh, it's, it's, it's listed here. You come up with oh, yeah. yeah. so yeah. This, this yeah. is 28,000. So it's four residential butters plus the transmission lines. Correct. Right. Can I show it was 5.6. Yeah. 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 So 5.6, not 25. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It is 5.6. Yeah. That's yeah. my point yeah. number That's two. two. So I read it as <laughs> yeah, I was where number two. Up, yeah, I was wondering where you came up with the 25. 5.6. It's all the fish. Yeah, it's all the fish that I've been eating. I was nervous there. And one more. Being your ad led off earlier, Mike. What's that? The back taxes. Did we say the amount? 70,000. 70,000. Okay. 70,000. I have the 700k to clean up. Correct. 700 or 750? 700. I said 700. That's 700,000. I'll pay a lot of roads. I'll say it. Is that an estimate or is that firm proposal? Do we need to He said they got that today, but I assume that's his firm proposal. Do you want to, uh, as testimony or findings of fact, the setbacks or oh, that's part of the record, so that's we don't have to state that. Right. We'll sign. We'll sign. We'll it. sign one of these. We'll sign. Chris will sign too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I knew okay. that. I would. I normally would just do that. Yeah, right. We should Treat check that. the date on that, Chris. I'm not sure that I may only have gotten the newest one electronically. That's November. So no, the right. revision. Um, no, it says November file. Yeah. Okay. So you have another one, you say? Yeah. The. The smaller one oh, is. Oh, um, we'll sign this. I'll, yeah. you, you need Don't sign that one because I screwed right. it. Do you have a clean one, Amy? Get a clean one. You all have one except for you, Chris. I, I didn't give you yeah, one. Right. But use a clean one. Yeah. I'll use Mike once he's done. I'm he's written a mic right all over, too. Oh, I've written all over. Josie, did you write on yours? No. Can I have yours? Would you mind donating it to the cause? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was one short, so. Does uh, the fact that they're only cutting down trees uh, on the site, does that make any no, it doesn't really affect no, us. Doesn't affect that. Point. Point. Right. And going back to the, the butters, we just said four residential butters plus the Eversource transmission lines is the fifth of butter. But it's it's considered a residential lot, so that's okay. why they're saying five residential well, zone properties. Where, I guess the, where the river itself was, is that residential too? That's residential as well. So is that that's yeah. another butter then, right, Don? That, that's the lot that's owned by... Well, there's a strip there between the, the right. locust area and the... Right, and, and the that was the one that was owned by Colin Wade too. Then, then Correct. But is that, do we have to count that as an additional residential lot? Or that's what I'm trying to figure out. That is a residential lot over there as well. Right. Right. So um, I guess you could say six residential six. lots in okay. total. Got it. Okay. If you're counting in now, yeah. is it? Yeah. Yes, or six total. Now, is it? Yeah. yeah, got it. I got. I know. I got that done. I think it's going to help with when he's doing the variances. It says Boston Eversource. Well, it's, it's Dave now Eversource, but. I can't think of any other findings for that. No, that's you have approval by the planning board, correct? Right? I mentioned that. Okay. Yeah. We do have planning board approval. For the, just in the general, is approval of the project, right? Yeah. Approval of the project and plans, right? They, uh, what are they, what Amy, what are they, that's a site plan approval, right? By the planning board? Yes. Site plan approval. Got it. Site plan approval. That's what they were. And that was dated, was it this week or last week, Amy? Do you know offhand? I don't know when it came, no. You've got the file, I think. I don't think Or Joe. Joe, maybe? It might, is it in a book? It, it would be loose, not in the book. Oh, it's right here, then. Right yeah. here is. Oh, you have it. So it would be um, February, that's 11. February 11th. Okay. okay. Just like plan approval, February 11th. Okay. And then we'll go through the criteria. Well, that's, rip. that's for This is for special permits, still. Oh, that's gone. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. He's got, he filled that out twice, too. For some reason, I guess for each one, you fill it out. Twice? No, I think there's just two copies in there of oh, the okay, whole application. Okay, okay, okay. So let's go through that. Yep. Did he get it? Did he give you extra money for variances? No. He did. Nope. I didn't realize there were variances. Yeah. Rich no. had met with them. They really everything. should be right. Yeah. yeah. I, I will collect that. Yeah. 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 That pays for all the extra work we've had to do on That's this right. one. That's right. That's right. All right. The use is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw. The proposed use is allowed use in the underlying zoning district through the issuance of a special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals. 
the use is in an appropriate location, not detrimental to the neighborhood, and does not significantly alter the character of the zoning district. The locust property is adjacent to an existing electrical transmission easement and will not be visible from the public way. In addition, the site is also bordered by a wooded strip of land bordering on the Stop River and which is not considered a buildable parcel. Adequate and appropriate facilities will be provided for the proper operation of the proposed use. A proposed photovoltaic array is a passive system and does not require personnel to operate. The site planning includes a paved access drive to facilitate access to the equipment on site. The proposed use would not be detrimental or offensive to the adjoining zoning district and neighboring properties due to the effects of lighting, odor, smoke, noise, sewage, refuge materials, visual or other nuisances. Proposed use does not require site lighting. Additionally, proposed use does not produce odor, smoke, or noise. Proposed use does not generate sewage or any refuge material. For these reasons, the proposed use should not be considered a detriment to the adjoining zoning district and neighboring pro properties, nor should it be considered offensive. The proposed use would not cause undue traffic congestion in the immediate area. The proposed use will not generate vehicle trips and as such will not cause undue traffic congestion. Do we acknowledge anywhere within the um, finding of facts about that it was a short period of time for the cleanup? Yeah, that they're saying within 30 days. Right, so I'll add that to the finding of facts. Mm -hmm. 30, 40 yep. days, he said. That's what he, no, he said 30 days for mm -hmm. cleanup, correct? Yes. Yep. yep, month. The proposed site plan shall be filed for approval with the planning board and the proper number of copies submitted to the applicant for a special permit to the Board of Appeals. A site plan review application package has been filed <coughs> with the planning board. This application to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit includes the appropriate number of copies as required. Mm -hmm. And the use and purpose is consistent with the 1992 master plan and as most recently updated, which is correct. Okay. Yeah, no, that's, that's well written. So that's, they're all set there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And you have all your funny effects there, right? Yes, I do. So yeah. do and I'll probably, you know, work with Mike. I'll, c I'll compare the draft with Mike for the, uh, just to make sure we cover it. The, uh, I've covered it. Yep. I'll help you with that. Covered yep. it? Yep. Well, no, yeah, just to make sure. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So can we I'll get I'll make sure it's done. Yeah. Do you want a motion? Yes. To approve. Special permit. Special permit. <coughs> to allow. Excuse me. Go ahead. You're doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're motion trying to, to confuse them. Motion to approve the special permit for 15th Lincoln Road. You have a relocated lot. It's to um, to allow a large-scale ground-mounted solar photovoltaic system um, at 15 Lincoln Road, assessors map 22, lot, lot 76, lot 619, in the B4 zoning district. I'll second it. Okay. Any further discussion? No. Okay. This would be a yes to grant. Yes to grant. Don? Yes to grant. Mike? Yes to grant. Yes to grant. Tim? Yes to grant. And Josie? Yes, it's a no-brainer. Yep. We want you guys to have practice, right? Okay. It's unanimous. All those in favor? Aye. For the special permit? Aye. Aye. Uh, yes. Yes to grant. Yes said to grant. Yes. I said yes. Yeah. Okay. So we don't have to say aye. Done. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now we need to do... We have three, three variances that we have to do. Mm -hmm. <coughs> can we vote on each one separately, or can we combine the three and vote on all three? I think we can combine them all. Okay. When you say combine them, can combine each variance? Yeah, I don't think we can list all the variances as one motion. Right. Is that what you're referring to? Yes. Yes. yes, one motion. I think we can do yeah. it as one motion. Yeah, we have, three, we have to speak to both the D1E2, E1B, and the M7A. Correct. And which, again, they're going to apply to different And then we've parts. got the variance criteria, right? Right, right. So the variance must be res with respect to a particular land or structure. We, we have that. Uh, there must be circumstances relating to soil conditions, shape, or topography of such land or structures, and especially affecting such land or structures, but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it is located. So the circumstances are this is obviously a brownfield, so the soil conditions are such that this is undevelopable other than for this application. Right. That's the main reason I want to put it in there. So if somebody else comes to us in the future, we can point back and say, well, this, your property is not a brownfield. This was, and therefore we granted the variance. So it gives us some future right, cover. Think, uh, so just record what you said then, undevelopable. Yeah, that's a very good point. <laughs> I could only do that once. <laughs> I know, you did it so um, well, though. 
<laughs> that this uh, this property cannot be developed sites, um, yeah. for any other means other, other yeah, them, so than which it has yeah, been. Uh, there you go. The request has been asked for. And the we can also point just to the, the uh, on Abbeville. This is a unique topography in which it drops off yeah, 40 feet from the Stop River. If you know if and you it is actually the yeah. elevation yeah, the, the of the resident, the four residential yeah. homes are 50 feet yeah. to the north, yeah. to the north side. Yeah. Okay, right. I used well, to live in Walpole. I remember that. We called that the yeah. north, that's the, the south. south. So, so that would be the, the, the east, oh, yeah. the east oh, that side. Was, that's a lot of yeah. yeah. increased yeah. elevation. Yeah. Yeah. Are you paying attention over here? Yeah. We're working on we're working on topography. We here. were talking about topography. Where were you? We? What were you saying? In a different town, but in a different town, in a different state. But we well, would you about please? We'll get on the same program as the rest of us <laughs> and stop talking about a different state. Come we're on, gonna, we're going to add two. So please explain to us what we just talked about in topography, Mike. You said that the topography <laughs> is very unique. Right. So we're we're actually going to say that the soil conditions, because of the undevelopable. Under, the, the, yeah. Because the property right. would be undevelopable for any other yep. use other than this application. So sort of, and we're also going to mention the shape of topography as well. The topography, it's very unique. Right, the topography said, of yeah. this. Okay. And I guess the shape. I'll agree with Mike on this. The shape is not unique. Right. It's only unique. The solar right. array is unique, but the shape of the water is probably not unique. Okay. Uh, I'll be able to work that. I out. would agree with him on that. Thank you. Okay. He did this for a long time and has some <laughs> good insight. <laughs> And as far as the dimensional uh, issues, I just got to make sure I document them properly, what the dimension differences are from what's required and what's in the plan. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, little enforcement of the provision of the bylaw would involve substantial hardship, financial otherwise, to the petitioner or applicant. Obviously, that's correct in this case. Yeah. If we actually forced them to do that, the project would be, yeah. would be un Unfeasible. viable. Right. <coughs> In this case, we're actually getting tax money mm -hmm. as well as yeah. back taxes, so that's great. Mm -hmm. And then desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of the bylaw. Right. And that's absolutely correct. Can we also say that it's obviously a positive? It's a positive. Positive in terms of what the community the, and yeah, on the yeah, region. Yeah. Yep. And that yeah. they've spoken to. He spoke to two of the neighbors, I think, or he got a letter from one neighbor one. and spoke with another one, neighbor. Yeah. And Noah Bud has spoken. Noah Bud has spoken against it. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then we got tax revenue. That's, that's yes. Positive. Yeah, we said that. As, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, our. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're doing our part to improve the environment. We're a green town now, so. drafted very quickly so we can kind of work towards finishing it by next week if that's okay yeah. yeah I'd like to see us clean this up pretty fast yeah okay what I would you know what Amy I would I would ask them and I think it might help Joe yeah ask them to do a little chart showing exactly the the the, the variance the requirement and what they're proposing. Yeah, it just it makes just it easy. To, makes it so easy. Sort of makes it like what was in the corner of that only needs to be updated. Yeah, well, they, they, I don't even think that table covered it all. Basically, for each one of the variances that they require, if they can speak to D1, E2, and then an E1, D, and state specifically what was required and what they're going to be versus that requirement, which is going to be a deficit, and where that deficit is. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like they talked right. about it, but they didn't put it in writing. They didn't put it in writing. Yeah, yeah, I, was, I, was they, I was trying it, to find it. It would be good if they did it because yeah. it, okay. it's almost like a table. If they can do a table specific yeah, right. to this. Because on the south side, they've got M7, M7A, they've got D1E2, yeah. you know, and then on the westerly side, they've got M7A, so they can just list that for us. Yeah. And he can do that. Too. You can, if you can ask yeah. them all just to list those things for so Joe has them as part of the record. Sure. Yeah. Oh. yeah okay. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll assume I'll be getting it, so I'll just make room for it in the write up. Okay. 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 Anything else? No, I think that's it. Basically okay. covers it. We have to vote now on the variances? We do. Okay. We have to first have a motion. Okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> and he's actually got his. So he's like, I get the second. Yep. Um, all right, so I make a motion that we uh, approve the variances sought by the applicant for 15 Lincoln Road for the uh, large scale ground mounted solar uh, photovoltaic system. 
granting the relief of the uh, requirements of D1E2, E1B, and M7A. Is that enough? Yeah. For the property, you would say for the Well, for the property yeah. 15 Lincoln Road, the assessment map 22, block 76, lot 19, and the B4 zoning district. Good. Do we have a second? I'm seconding. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay. Motion to grant. Three variances. Done. Yes to grant. Yes to grant. Yes to grant. I said Joe. I said yes to grant. <laughs> yes to grant. Yes Light. to grant. Yes to grant. Josie. Yes to grant. Okay. okay. Good. Can I have my pink sheet back? I might need it for the weekend. <laughs> Thank you for providing. I'll give it to you next week. We'll make it a copy, right? Oh, okay. Make a copy, right? Okay. Very right. good. All right. So I haven't, yeah, seen, so I haven't, I haven't seen a variance get, before us in, in, okay. in a and year. We, she'll get, if she can get that to you tomorrow, Joe, that will help you. Just have them give yeah, it that'll be fine. Yeah, I'll keep in touch with you on It'll just okay. make it easier when you're writing it. Yeah. yeah. And just have them give the location, exactly the variances, <coughs> three, because on the south side, they keep looking for three variances. On the western side, looking for the one variance. Yeah. So yeah. they can list them all out. And what the, what the limit is, 150. He's looking for 50. Yeah. Right. You know, 25.5. We require 50. Right. Yeah. Okay. This is very helpful. You know, only we find that to be right in the plans. Yeah. Right. But we'll just take it as an addendum, I guess, through what the communication is. Sure. And the only other thing, and I think Don asked the question, has nothing to do with this, is that um, the town council, we asked town council about this issue of, of number of voting members for a quorum for a comprehensive permit. And what it came back is for a special permit and for a variance, we need to have a quorum of four voting members. For a comprehensive permit, you only need three voting members, mm. but it has to be unanimous. So that's the rule. So we can we can actually approve a comprehensive permit with three voting members. Mm -hmm. And and I talked with Dan Hill, who said, you know, everybody makes a big deal out of it, but he said if the worst came to worse, and say you got you got sick or I got sick, and we only had two people, the applicant could actually go back and refile. He'd just have to get a letter from the state, and he could actually, the clock would start all over again, and we could start with five again. So you can actually restart the clock if you have to. So does that answer? You, you knew you were, you had asked about that last time. Yeah. So yeah, that's for a comprehensive that's permit, three voting members. So good information. Yep. Anything else? Okay. Do I have a motion to close the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for March 4th at 8.15 p.m.? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Good evening. Do you really want to ask Chris back there?